how to create a horizontal bar chart with a background at the very back. So if I refresh here, you can see here, it will show a trail. So let's start to look how to add the horizontal bar chart. For this, of course, we need to have a boiler template. And the boiler template you can find here on chargers3.com, getting started. Once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of code. So what we want to do first, of course, is to make sure that this is a horizontal bar chart. So for that, what I'm going to do in the options, I'm going to say index axis, and this will be equal to the Y. Save that, refresh, there we are. So now we have this. So how do we create this bar at the very back? We need for this a plugin. So I'm going to say here plugins, and then we're going to make an array out of this. And then what I want to do here is to add basically the horizontal uh, background plugin or something like that. You can give it anything you want. You can copy this. Then I'm going to say here, this will be, be the block for that. And I'm going to say constant, this equals, then I'm going to say ID, although we won't be using the ID, we'll just keep it like that. And I'm going to say here, when would we like to draw these background shapes? Well, we say here before data sets draw. And then I'm going to say here, chart the arguments and the plugins, although I won't be using the last two. So then what I need here is object destructuring. So if I do here constant, I'm going to do this equals chart. If you don't understand what I'm doing here, object destructuring, there's in the description box a video understanding chart JS yes, object destructuring. So in here, I want to have the CTX for drawing, and then I'm going to say here the chart area. And what I need here is probably the top, the bottom, left, comma, right, and maybe the width and the height we can we have to see that later on. Once we have this, oh, before I even go on here, what I need as well is the scale. So I'm going to see scales. I want here the X and Y variables. So once we have this, I can say here ctx.save to save all variables above. And once I have that part, what I want to do now is start to draw the shape. So what I want to do here is basically draw a shape at the back here. It starts here goes to the right side and then here goes down calculating how big the width is. So for this, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here, first of all, ctx.fill style for the color. Let's make a simple light gray background color. Just very straightforward. Then what I want to do is I want to have the uh, size of it. So I'm going to say here, ctx.fill rectangle and by size I mean the position where I start, basically here we're going to draw the shape and we need here the X position, the Y position, I need to know the width of it and I need to know the height. And the height is basically this so-called bar thickness, calculating exactly this part here. And from this part to this part is called a segment. So within the segment I still need to figure out how many pixels on both sides. So let's start to work on this. So the first thing what we need to do here is, let's start to make something very simple. We're going to get the width, which is this one here. I'm going to just, well, these are already fine because we have the width of left to right. Then I want to have a starting point at the left side, which is basically this line, but then we need to figure out the height. For this, because I have the skills here, I can use now a special built-in charge as command. So I'm going to say here, y dot get pixel for value and I can put in here the index number. The reason why I can put an index number here because this is what we call a category axis. So there's index 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way to 6. So if I want index 0, I will get the Monday exactly the center point. So I'm going to say here 0 and then for the height for now, let's say a thickness of 10 pixels. Save that. Refresh and as you can see here, we have this nice background working. But of course, it's in the center, but not fully. Well, it is in the center, but it starts from the center and going downwards. So we have to change that later on. But first, what I need to know is how thick is this? Well, to calculate this, what we need here is to understand how this bar is being calculated. And basically, what we're working with is we call the bar percentage and the bar category. So we're going to say here, um, bar percentage. And I'm going to later show you another way as well. And the bar percentage is 0 0.9 by default. And I'm going to say here the category percentage. And it is 0 0.8 by default. So we have these here.
But if you don't have this, because this is by default already assigned, but maybe you don't have these at all, I'm going to show you another way then later on how we can do that. So what I'm going to do here is the following. I need to calculate a few things. Number one, I need to know how big is my segment, because this here is based on the segment here. So what I need to know here, first of all, is the segment. And for that, what we can do is calculate this point all the way down here, which is basically our height, divide by the amount of data points we have, which is seven. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add up here another object, which is the data object. And I'm going to say here the following. I'm going to say here um, constant, and let's call this our uh, bar thickness, which calculates the thickness of the bar. So we have the bar thickness that will be equal to what exactly? Well, we're going to say here data dot, and then we're going to say here uh, labels. And what this truly does is basically getting here in the data, the labels, which gives us immediately information of how many ticks there are, or basically how many data points there are. And then what I'm going to do here is give, uh, no, dot length. So we have the amount of data points that is seven. So we have that seven data points and we're going to say here now, let's get the height divided by these seven data points. By doing that, we'll get a value, but, and let's copy this and put that in here, but it will not be, it's, as you can see, it's quite thick. And the reason why is this is just only the segment itself. So that is just from this point to here. So we're getting closer, but we need to make sure that this here is being calculated on top of it. So what we're going to do here is the following. I'm going to create a new constant. And this constant, I'll just call it the bar percentage. And that bar percentage equals data dot data sets index zero dot bar percentage. Why this? Well, let me show you. In the data, we go into the data sets index zero, and then we go here to the bar percentage. So we have that one there. But what happens if we don't have anything? So what I'm going to do is, if there's nothing, I'm going to extract the default value. Charge as by default, give a 0 0.9 as a value for the bar percentage. This is a default value that is assigned. So that is what we're going to do here as well for the category percentage, except here we're going to say 0 0.8. So now we have this. And then what we can do here, the bar thickness can be calculated or multiplied by the bar percentage, which is basically 90% of the segment, but also a multiplier of the category, which is also, which is 80%. So it makes it a little bit smaller, like maybe 30% or, or how did it ever is calculated. But if I save this now, refresh, you can see here now, it becomes smaller matching our item. And if I just put this here away, we could change this. Let's make this five, save, refresh. And you can see here now it starts to align nicely with whatever the bar size is. All right, so we have this here now. What I want to do now is making sure that this will move up nicely. So how do we do this? Well, basically, we're going here on the Y item. And we need to just calculate because the issue here, it starts from the center and then goes down. So what we need to do is we need to start exactly in the center or center and then going up here. So that's basically the 50% of whatever the thickness is. So what I can say here, I want to say here minus the bar thickness, but I want to have only 50% of that. So divide by two. So if I save this by default, this gives a priority and then it will deduct. So let's save this, refresh. And you can see here now this is nicely working. All right. So we're almost done here because what we need to do now is to do it for every other item. For that, we can just do it very simple uh, for each loop. So what we're going to do here is, um, I guess we're going to grab here the data dot labels and then we say here dot for each. And then in the for each, I'm going to say here, this will be the, the bar comma index number. And we have to make sure because this is a callback functionality like that function of uh, a arrow function expression. And then in here, I'm just going to cut out this, put that in there and say here, the index instead of the number that we have. Once we did that, 
going to enter and I'm going to say here ctx.restore. So we can undo afterwards all our settings. Save that, refresh, and there we are. So we can even confirm this if this is working. Let's change this to five, save, refresh, and now it just changes nicely.